telling you all a little bit about my dissertation work that evaluates the relationship between forest cover and genetic diversity in a tropical tree. So to start off, I'd like you guys to imagine the following scenario. Imagine that the movement of your genetic material and your successful reproduction relies almost entirely on a completely different species. So while this might be a nightmare situation for those of us who are control freaks, uh, this is actually the reality for over 85% of wild plant species that are outcrossing, meaning that their pollen, which is made up of uh, male gametes that are paternally inherited, have to be moved to a flower of a different individual. This happens through pollination, which for many plant species is mediated uh, by various animal species, so maybe different insects, birds, bats. Often pollination results in a successful fertilization event, and the development of offspring, which for a lot of plants uh, are seeds. So seeds are a combination of maternal and paternal gametes, um, female, female and male gametes that are maternally and paternally inherited. And a large portion of seed-bearing plants rely on animals to move seeds from the maternal tree in order for successful germination and recruitment. Decades of research have shown that Pollen is generally much more extensively dispersed than seeds, meaning that male gametes are likely to contribute more to overall gene flow, while female gametes are likely to strengthen fine scale spatial genetic structure. I'm really interested in genetic diversity because of the importance for the evolutionary potential of species. And some recent research has shown that male gametes overall have higher genetic or gametic diversity in different ecological contexts compared to female gametes, and thus contribute more to the overall allelic diversity of diploid seedlings. But it's hard to be a tree these days. We're living in a time with a lot of deforestation. This is a map of forest loss in the neotropics in red uh, is the forest loss from 2001 to 2016. One of the major consequences of forest loss is fragmentation. And forest fragmentation has been empirically linked to overall decreases in genetic diversity as measured through heterozygosity, allelic richness. But there remain two uh, gaps in our understanding of how this forest loss is related to uh, genetic diversity. And the first is that many studies don't empirically evaluate the area in which forest loss impacts genetic diversity. So, for example, given the extensive nature of many of these dispersal processes, you could imagine that considering forest cover in a small area like this may not uh, detect the outcomes, the genetic outcomes of dispersal compared to a larger area that more uh, comprehensively captures the broader context of deforestation. This is an example of an ecological study where the researchers measured different forest uh, habitat traits in areas of increasing size around a sampling area. And they correlated that with the avian community diversity. And they were able to identify the area in which uh, forest and habitat elements were most correlated with diversity, and they were able to apply that to a predictive model. And I suggest we adopt this same framework when we think about genetic diversity in communities. And that brings me to my first research objective, which is to empirically evaluate the area in which forest cover is most correlated with male and female gametic diversity. So the second gap in our knowledge is related to uh, how forest loss might be impacting in different ways uh, maternally inherited male gametes compared to, uh, sorry, paternally inherited male gametes compared to maternally inherited female gametes. And we know that these different types of gametes uh, influence microevolutionary processes differently, right? So, there are a few studies that have addressed this and have generally found that uh, female gametes seem to be more sensitive to forest loss. So this brings me to my second research objective, which is to determine if forest cover asymmetrically impacts male and female gametic diversity. So my prediction here is that while I would expect both male and female gametes to have a positive association with forest cover, the relationship with female gametes will be a little bit stronger. <laughs> So to address these uh, research objectives, I use the species Onocarpus patawa, which is a long-lived canopy palm tree. It's widely distributed throughout South America. 
and is of economic importance as it's used by a variety of indigenous groups. It's uh, a miniature spe species, although it's highly outcrossed. Um, it's mostly pollinated by these tiny little weevils. I think they're really cute. Um, and they've been shown to move pretty long distances, distances, a lot of extensive pollination. Seeds are dispersed by a variety of large body herbivores and also a lot of rodents. Um, and overall, seeds are dispersed shorter distances, but there is the capacity for long distance dispersal of seeds as well. So uh, to answer, address these uh, research questions, I went to Ecuador and I opportunistically sampled seedlings across the country. I have 29 sites in total, and um, I genotyped seedlings using eight microsatellite markers. I did a population genetic uh, structure analysis, and I found evidence for two main genetic clusters. So the first <coughs> is the purple, which uh, correlates to the sites in the west, and the Andes Mountains run through the center of the country, and we also have a genetic cluster in the east, which is in blue, and these sites are all in Amazonia. So next, I partitioned male and female comedic diversity. So I mentioned that I genotyped leaf tissue, which is, of course, from the offspring, right? So it's that mixture of maternal and paternal DNA. But importantly, I also genotyped the pericarp tissue, which is the outside of the seed. And that's just maternal DNA. And these seeds are growing on the maternal tree. So using that maternal genotype, I was able to compare it to the offspring genotype and determine which allele came from that maternal genotype, right? And so that's the female gamete. And then it's reasonable to infer that the other allele was contributed paternally, right? That allele came from the dad, so it's the male gamete. So once I had those pools of male and female gametes, I uh, calculated allelic diversity metrics. And these are equivalent to community diversity metrics. All you really need to know is um, I'll be focusing on alpha diversity. And alpha is the within site diversity, so within site comedic diversity. Overall, I found that male gametes in blue are higher or are more diverse than female gametes in green, and therefore contribute more to overall allelic diversity of seedlings. And diversity overall was a little bit higher in the east than in the west, which makes sense given the uh, colonization history of the species. So, Moving on to address my first research objective, what we did was find the, at each site, find the centroid of the sampling area and measure forest cover in areas of increasing size around that centroid. And the areas first increased by a radius of half a kilometer and then eventually increased by a kilometer. And then I correlated uh, the forest loss in those areas of increasing size with comedic diversity. And so, what we find for male gametes is that when you're looking at forest loss in small areas, we have a really low correlation coefficient with comedic diversity. And it increases as you expand the area in which you're considering forest loss. And this point in red is the area with the highest diversity, um, which has a radius of 14 kilometers. For female gametes, we see a very similar pattern. Overall, a little bit lower of a correlation coefficient but the highest uh, correlation is an area with a 60 kilometer radius. Very similar for a diploid leaf tissue, again, 60 kilometer radius and a little bit higher correlation coefficients overall. Um, so I'm going to be using forest cover in these areas with the highest uh, correlation coefficients in the next step, which was to address my second research question. Um, and then here I used linear mixed effects models. So each site, each point is a site, and for my predictor variable, I used forest cover, um, and then uh, the response var variable is the comedic diversity or alpha diversity for that site. So for male gametes, I found a significantly positive association, forest cover and genetic diversity, um, and the effect size was that for every 17% increase in forest cover, there was a uh, increase in diversity by over half an allele. For female gametes, I found another significantly positive association, but contrary to my prediction, it was actually uh, not as strong as a relationship compared to male gametes. So the effect size was that for every 13% increase in forest cover, we had an increase of a third of an allele. And then 
a similar, well, another positive association here, and a similar effect size for diploid uh, allele diversity. So, what does this research tell us? Um, to me, this research highlights that um, highlights that if you consider and empirically evaluate the relationship between um, forest cover and specific area, which forest cover is related to genetic diversity, it really enhances our understanding of these dynamics, right? So another way to highlight this, um, a recent study from our lab group did a very similar analysis in northwestern Ecuador using more of a landscape uh, scale instead of a regional scale, so a little smaller scale. And they correlated, or they uh, associated, or ran models, rather, with forest cover in a two kilometer radius around sampling areas. And again, male, female, and diploid uh, diversity. And they found a positive association for just females and diploid seedlings. And so if I were to use, with my data, um, forest cover in a two kilometer radius around my sampling sites, I wouldn't find uh, a positive association for any of my models. And that's, of course, a very different story from what I just told you um, now. So really highlights that, that importance. Uh, sorry. So um, another takeaway is that this highlights that male families contribute more to overall real diversity, but they're more vulnerable to forest loss. And this is not what we expected, um, but has it could have some, some serious implications for conservation and management practices. And unfortunately, we weren't able to identify the mechanisms behind these relationships, which I think is an important uh, next step for this. But we do uh, suspect that it could be that there were disruptions and dispersal mutualisms that were behind this. Of course, if you are decreasing forest area, you're likely decreasing the effective population size of the palm itself. Um, so overall, area of forest loss and diversity are important. Um, male gametes contribute more to allele diversity, but are more vulnerable to forest loss. Thank you guys for your attention and to everyone who made this work possible.